All right, I think we're live. I hope so. All right, so I'm going to wait to start. I see one person in the comments already. I'm not going to try to say your name because I'm sure I can't pronounce it very well, but I'm glad you're here. Thanks for joining. Let me know if you're here in the comments and let me know if you can hear me all right, if the audio is okay. Is okay. Hi, rescue auntie. All right, so today we're going to do a photorealistic project of a kingfisher in pastel on pastel mat. And I was in a little bit of a hurry because I couldn't get the lighting uh, to be just fine and I had problems with the focus. And there's already a sketch on my paper, but you can't really see it. So I hope when I get started with the colors, you will be able to see all the details all right on camera. Maybe I have to go and find a new cam or a new um, webcam to use. Ah, lots of people in the comments. Hi, Kay Hutchins, Vaughn, um, Linda, Irma, and Michella. I'm glad you're here. So I was supposed to stream on Thursday, but something last minute came up that I couldn't say no to. So I've moved it to tonight. And then the next streams will also be on Wednesdays. Probably eventually they will be on Thursdays again, but for now they'll be on Wednesdays. All right, so yay, lots of people here. Thanks for joining. So I'm going to be working on this eight by 10 piece of pastel mat. The color is beige, but you can work on any um, background color you like. Um, on camera for the camera maybe I should have gone with another background color this one is tricky to film but eventually the kingfisher is going to stand out very well from this paper the paper color is nice and light and then the colors on the kingfisher are going to be nice and dark and vibrant so eventually I think it will look very nice um, I'm going to be focusing just on the birds so no background for this one but the background colors are very nice. It's not a difficult background to fill in. So you can, of course, fill in these greens for the background. But I'm going to skip that part. Okay, so the sketch is on here. So we can skip that step as well. I just traced it real quick um, because it's quicker. And now I can just focus on the colors. I probably won't finish this tonight. I will take about one and a half hours. And then if I can finish it, I will finish it next week on Wednesday. And I'm going to be working with Stabilo Carpatello pastel pencils. So I just have some colors um, picked out already. And it will just be a nice small study to work on the stream will stay online so you can um, watch and follow later if you want to as well so let's get started so i'm going to be starting with the beak and then i'll do the rest of the face and the head and then i'll work down towards the feathers which are going to be really nice to fill in but first, I also have a kneaded eraser with me just to lighten up the sketch lines uh, because I don't want them to show through the drawing. The sketch was done with graphite. Graphite will show through pastels if it's too dark. So I just like to go over the sketch a little bit with the kneaded eraser and lighten it up. On camera, you won't be able to see it anyway, but I can see it. Hi Edie, glad you're here again. I recognize your name from last time. 
And as always, if you have any questions, you can just ask in the comments. I have the comments next to me, so I'll just read through once in a while and answer questions. And in the meantime, I hope that the stream will continue to work without any lags or errors. All right, so I'm just going over the most heaviest areas of the sketch and tap. I don't want to damage the pestle mat, so I tap very lightly until I can barely see the sketch. Where are you all from? Let me know in the comments. I know there's some duchies. All right, so the beak is very long, very pointy. It looks a little bit like a kookaburra. I think the kookaburra is also a, a type of kingfisher. I'm not sure. If you know that, let me know. And the beak is a very nice rosy um, reddish color. So I will mix some different colors for the beak. So I see this nice dark magenta, um, 330, which I will use. And then some red, I need some red. This one. 310 which is also a little bit on the pinkish side then the top line of the beak is quite white so i will use white as well also for all the little details and scratches on the beak this area is very small so i'll make sure that my points are very sharp also 640 and also because it's a small area I won't have that much space for a lot of layering and a lot of colors so I'll just stick to these four for now for the beak make sure that the points are all sharpened so for sharpeners I like to switch between the Faber-Castell color grip which I really like but I also just like to use these um, very general cheap metal sharpeners with two holes. I just use what I have at hand. With pestle pencils you have to make sure to have a few um, spare sharpeners with you because they get very dull quickly. And then when the blades get dull the points of the pencils will break. So have a lot of sharpeners um, as backups. So let's start with the top line of the beak, which is white or light at least. So I'm going to outline the top with the white. So for this, it's very important that you don't have any of the graphite lines show through because it will definitely show through the white. I'm going to outline this. I hope you can see this on camera. I should have gone for a different color background, but I like this one. Outline the top real quick. And also the very point of the beak on the right. Also, there's going to be some dust coming off the, the pencil, so I have to blow to remove it once in a while. So. If I blow against my microphone, I can't help it. I need to do that sometimes. And then I'm also going to take the whites along the top line of the, the mouth line, which is in the center. Going to try to make it simple for the first steps. I hope you can see that. It's very difficult to see. My camcorder was not cooperating today. So I will 
make this step quick and then I can move on to the red and you'll probably see that. The white is just to outline all the most brightest parts on the beak. Starting with that, so I have a bit of white on there. Let's get started with the outlining of the, the bottom, which is going to be dark. So I can skip, move to a darker color, so 330. Nice dark magenta color. I'm going to outline the bottom with that. I'm going to make sure to follow the shape of the beak very closely guiding the pencil as I go into the face and let's go over that one more time you'll probably see that All right, and I'm also going to take this color on the mouth line here. Just making sure to map out the darks and the lights for the, the first step. Mouth line goes all the way into the face um, below the eye. It stops right here, so here we have the corner of the mouth. Um, South Africa? Wow, I want to go there. Um, first time here, are pastel pencils very different from colored pencils? Yes, they work very differently. So colored pencils are uh, oil or wax based and they both have um, they have both in them. So oil and wax, which makes them very greasy and very firm. So you can't smudge colored pencils like you can with pastels. So pastels are more dusty. They don't have oil or wax in them. It's just pressed pigments. Um, which makes you can layer them, you can layer light on top of dark and you can smudge them out with your finger which is easy or nice for like blurry backgrounds and it makes the process quite quick as well um, colored pencils take way more time because you have to layer them very carefully to get a smooth result and you have to work from light to dark with colored pencils and with pastels you can work from dark to light so that's the main difference it's just a very different type of pencil to work with different ingredients I like both of them I'm going to add this magenta in the nostril area so we have a little almond shaped nostril here And I'm going to place this color in the most dark parts of the beak. For now, I'm just working with one color. We can always layer more. And I'm going to fill in the bottom half with a light layer. So because this area is so small I can't smudge it with my finger to push the colors into the paper so I'll have to use the pencils and just layer the colors on top of each other and then eventually um, I will get rid of the paper texture so I'm going to take it slow for this one because I already know I won't be able to finish it. OK, 
Okay, so you can see the top half of the beak is catching a lot of light. So the top half is um, lighter than the bottom half. So I'm going to add the most dark magenta color on the bottom half. And the top half I'll leave open for now. So I can move on to the next color because I do want to put in a little bit of red. So I'm going for this 310 color. And I'm going to layer that on top of the magenta. Sticking with the warm tones for now. Now by adding this red, I can already see that the paper is starting to get saturated. I'm using light pressure. I always use light pressure. The harder you push at the start, the more difficult it will be to add detail later on. So. I always work with light pressure also for the first layers. Okay, and then I also see a little bit of the red on the top half. still have that white along the top of the mouth line so you can see where both halves of the beak separate. I'm going to go a little bit over the white with the red to make it a bit less prominent. And then for the top half of the beak, I don't need that much red. Just a little bit. I see like a mix between red and pink and a bit of violet. So I think I will need to mix in more of a violet tone. I think I'm going in with um, 642 which is also a really nice color. It's not too vibrant and I'm going to fill up the top half of the beak with that, but just a super light layer. Just to create a base. It's actually pretty muted. So I can go over with some more vibrant colors. Mm, so let's go in with, now I'm going to pick more colors than I was planning to, but I feel like I need just a tad of 335. I will make a list later on when I'm done with this, um, this stream, just make a list of the colors that I used and put it in the description. I'm going to glaze a bit of this 335 on top. So glazing again, very light pressure, just add a bit of that color. That will make everything a bit more pink. Don't worry if it gets too dark, we're going to lighten it up later with a lighter color. Okay, a bit of pink there.
or it's more like a very vibrant magenta. I have no idea what this is called. Okay, so let's lighten it up. So I need to go over with another light color. Probably not white. Light, white will be too light. So instead I'm going in with a color that will suit these colors that I just put in. So I can use, for instance, 681, which does have quite a pinkish undertone in it. And I'm just going to add that on top of this, uh, the top half. The bottom half can stay dark. Let's add that in. And I'm looking at this light shape on the beak. And this will create the idea of uh, the sun hitting the top. And it will right away push the underlying colors into the paper. Okay, so I don't need any of this on the bottom half. So this is already a good start, but it's not finished yet. I need more contrast in the beak, which means I want to especially darken up um, the bottom half. So I'm going to take a little bit more of that 330 color. By going over with the red, I did lighten up the beak a bit, so going back in with that dark magenta, very nice color. I like this one. Creating a bit of like patches, some areas on the beak are darker and some are more like a, like a light red. Making sure that the edges of the beak stay nice and sharp. Oh, hi, Mike. Glad you could join. Okay, so I want to just clean up the shape of this bottom half a bit. So I see a bit of a curve, but I don't want to overdo it. Go over the mouth line again. Okay. Um, yeah, a little bit more dark right here. Underneath the nostril area, you can see a darker spot. This also creates a bit of roundness, creates a bit of roundness in the beak. Alright, so this looks better. I'm going even more darker, darker, more darker. It's a very good English. Okay, so I'm taking 640. Uh, which is actually the dark version of the 642, which I just used. These go very well together. And I'm going to darken up the bottom line of the beak even more. And the mouth line as well. inside the nostril a little bit a 
Okay, so now I need to blow off the dust. <laughs> okay. Made a little mistake here. Let's go back in with some um, light, 681. Because I want this light edge. Bring it back. Okay, so, oh, Mike asks, how did orchestra practice go? Well, it, it went fine. I just practiced uh, by myself today. So tomorrow I do have the first um, actual orchestra rehearsal, which I didn't know I was supposed to have this week. Um, it came last minute, so... But it's a really good opportunity, so I really wanted to go, which means I had to move my stream. Every time I try to plan streaming, something comes up and I have to move it or cancel it. But it's no problem, I can do the streams on Wednesdays. Okay, so I'm going to take white and add in these little details on the bake. So I see some scratches going to wiggle the pencil around, create some natural looking um, dots and things. It's quite small, so I don't need to copy it completely. little bit of white detailing along the mouth line, just some dots here and there. It's really easy to add the white details if you use a very light pressure at the start. The white goes on top pretty smoothly. I hope you can see that on camera. And then I can also go in with a little bit more color to add to the top half of the beak. Let's do just a tad of 335. And this is a very, very opaque color, so I'm not using a lot of it. Just very lightly around these light um, white patches that I just put in. What would you say is the most challenging animal you've ever drawn? Hmm, I'm not sure. I don't think there are particularly challenging animals. I think every subject has something tricky to it when it comes to maybe colors or anatomy. So I think in that way, every animal is equally hard. Um, but I have made portraits uh, commissioned portraits from, for instance, very, very blurry and dark references, which is really hard. So I think that's more challenging. If you have a reference photo that is not detailed and you have to make up um, a lot of your own like details based on what you know. So that's challenging, I feel. Commissioned portraits are always quite challenging because you never know what kind of reference you're gonna get. Okay, so a little bit more, but not too much. So by now the paper should be saturated, so you won't be able to see the texture of the paper through anymore. Okay. 
I am currently working though on a, a leopard in pastels. That one is tricky, but mainly because of all the spots, which takes a lot of patience and a lot of time. So I feel like the animals with tr with stripes or spots or um, reptiles with this skin texture, which is really hard to draw. So I feel like the animals that take a lot of time are the most difficult. I'm kind of curious though in the comments um, what animals you all are finding the hearts the most hard the hardest to draw. Really good English tonight. <laughs> I haven't spoken any English today, so I notice when I don't talk any English during the day, I have more of a difficulty switching if I have to stream in the evening. So I'm really having my um, my gram gram grammatics, not sure if that's a word, my grammar mixed up, that's it. Okay, so I feel like this beak is more or less finished. I don't need to do much more to it. I can maybe add just a tad of blue, um, 435, and that is just to make some of the, the sky reflect in the top half of the beak. So just a little bit of blue here and there, not too much. Okay, and eventually you'll notice that the paper won't be able to take any more layers. So then it's time to move on to the next area. Uh, what I do want to do is take just a tad of black and go over the mouth line. I'm taking black and I make sure to put in just a tiny thin line. all the way into the face. Okay. Maybe a little bit of black at the bottom of the beak to create even more contrast. Okay, the larger you work, the easier it is to put in more detail, but this is very small. So this is basically all I can do for the beak. Very eager to move on to the head though because it's very nice color and the eye of course so let's do the eye first zooming in on the eye okay so I'm going to outline the eye right away with black but I have to make sure that the tip is super sharp so I'm going to sharpen it real quickly Um, which pencil do I use? Yes, I use um, pastels, soft pastel pencils from Stabilo. All right, so furry animals. Yeah, I'm so used to drawing fur now, so I don't have any issues with fur anymore. Feathers I also really like. It's, I think it's the things you practice most are getting the easiest. So fur is just a matter of practice, looking at shapes and looking at contrasts. 
it's very very important instead of just hairs look at the shapes in the hairs and the darks okay so I'm going around the eye and I'm looking at the shape very closely and with light pressure I'm going to draw in the shape of the eye and it's not completely round it's more like an overly shape and then around the eye you can see this lighter eyelid but I'm not going to draw that, draw that out with black because it's not black around the edges okay so there we have the outline for the eye then I can see this large highlight as well and I'm going to fill that in first before I do any of the coloring within the eye so I'm going to take white and the highlight is not white there's a lot of color in it um, mainly blue and violet but I'm going to do it with white first I can always add color to it later but as it's such a small area it's easier to fill it in with white first So I'm following the shape of it, this half moon shape. I hope the quality of the video is still alright. Mm, it's not great. I feel like the previous stream was a lot better, so I'll have to look into that and see how I can make this look sharper because it's very blurry on camera so I do see this large pupil which I can put in with black I'm going around the highlights it looks very weird at first Okay, so around the highlights, I don't want to put in any black over it. Make sure the pupil is nice and round, and then I can fill in the rest of the eye and the iris. Then the rest of the eye is also very dark, but it's more like a brown. So I'm taking brown. 635 I'm going to fill in the rest also working around the highlights and I can just put in space layer the pupil is not very prominent so it will kind of mix in with the rest which is fine a little bit of brown but I also want to warm it up by adding some dark violet some 640 on top of that on top of the brown and then with the same color I'm going to put in the shadows so I see this eyebrow area and a dark shadow underneath the eyebrow which I can put in already and I can also put in the eyelids so a little bit of a space in between the eye and the eyelid and then I'm going around with this color 
creating some shape in there. So usually with pastels, the bigger you work, the easier it gets. I think I made this a bit too small, which makes it really tricky. Oh well. Um, Ad Adrian, I hope I say that right. I did make a sketch beforehand, yes. It's in graphite, but I lightened it so you can't see it on camera. But it's there, I can see it. Alright, so now right away we can do a base layer for the whole head area. Just get that in, that will give a lot more uh, shape to the face before we get into all the small little details. Below the beak I see a nice white area, so I'm going to put that in. Below the beak, super nice batch of white feathers. Putting that in very heavy so you can see it. That's the only white we have. First I'm filling in the whole space with the base layer and then we can put in the actual feather texture. So after putting in the white, you can see that the rest of the head is more like um, a red undertone with just a bit of purple. So let's choose a color that is good as a base for this feather tone. So something like in between a red and a purple. This one I like. 655. Let's sharpen that. And I'm going to fill in the whole head with that. Let's go around the outlines first. Make sure that it's not one straight line over the head, but we do have kind of this feather texture, some little lines sticking out. Putting in all these nice And then I'm going to mark the edge of the head where we transition into the, the blue feathers. I'm studying the direction of the feathers a bit and I'm working with that direction. Over the face and outwards, around the eye. And then I'm also going to look at all the different dark patterns that I see and just map everything out a bit. Just get an idea of the shape in the face. All right, so this is more like a brownish, reddish color. I can put in a base layer with that and I'm going to go with the feather direction and just add a light layer because I do want to add some more colors to this. Thank you, Laura. 
Um, do I draw on special paper for the pastel pencils? Yes, I draw on pastel mats, Clairefontaine pastel mats, and it's the only pastel paper that I use. It's the only one I would recommend. Around the eye, I see this pattern looking nice. Okay. Filling this in nice and lightly. I don't need to be covering everything. This is just to get an idea of the direction of the feather growth. I do want to put in some more vibrant colors. This is pretty brown looking to me. Looking at the edge of the beak. Alright, let's go in with more of a red. And some purple as well. Unfortunately, the Stabilo Carbothello line doesn't have any good reds. It's or too pink or too brown. I'm going to try this one, the 645, which is slightly different from the color that I just used. I'm going to add that. So this is more like a purpley tone. I think this is nice for the slightly darker areas in there. Still using light pressure. I don't need a super sharp pencil for this because I'm just filling up the space and I don't need any detail for now. This already creates a nice value. Still, I want more red, so this is enough for the purple tone. Let's add more red. If I can find any suitable tones to use. This is more like an orange. Well then I'm going to just combine two tones. So this um, is 675, which is more like an orange tone. I'm going to add that mainly at the top of the head, which is a little bit lighter, catching some lights. And this is too orange, but I can add some red to it. Still looking at the fur direction or the feather direction. Let's add this on this eyebrow area as well, which is a bit lighter. Around the eye, I'm still leaving open that eyelid space. Okay, so now I want to put in the red uh, 310, and I'm going to glaze that over the whole face, especially over that orange.
Okay, so that's a nice combination of colors, but the paper is not yet saturated, so I have to add more. Also, add more contrast to bring in all the dark shapes that I lost a little bit. So I'm going in with, let's do the 640 dark purpley tone. And I'm going to look again a little bit more closely at the dark shape. So below the eye, I see this dark movements. Uh, the eyebrow area is very dark. The back of the head. following the right direction, but I'm not paying attention to the individual feathers because for such a small study, it's not that important. Contrasts are way more important in this case, basically always. All right, so now I do want to start filling up the paper more. So I'm going back to all the colors I used. Let's see which one I can go back to. 645. I'm still using light pressure, rather go over a couple of times. This is quite a rough piece of, piece of pasta mat. The texture can vary a bit, depending on which color or which sheet you have. Sometimes they are very soft and you can't add that many layers. And this one is quite rough, so this one needs a lot of layers. Okay, starting to get a nice, full, vibrant color. Going back to that orangey tone a little bit, the 675. Filling up the paper. bit more red so now I'm just switching between all the colors until I feel that the paper texture has gone Okay, and then a little bit of pink um, 335 along the top side of the head. Creating a nice base for the lighter details. So I always like to start out a bit darker so that I have, I have enough room 
to put the lighter details on top. So right now this is very flat and very dark, but we're going to add all the details still. All right, so now I can see if I can just blend this in a bit. So I'm going over with my finger, making everything just a bit smoother without smudging out the eye. So I'm going around the eye very carefully. Pushing the colors into the paper, getting rid of the texture. Okay. Maybe go back one more time to bring back the darks before we go in with the lights. Now I'm going to go in more carefully with 640 and just create some of the feather textures. So you can see these like wavy textures over the head, drawing in some individual lines. In the right direction, clumping the lines together and then leaving some space for the lighter or hairs or feathers to go in between. And just a few of these lines will already create some contrast, some realism in there. If they're drawn in the right direction, it's very important. Um, let's look at the comments. Do I prefer pastel over colored pencils? I think currently I do. It varies a little bit. Right now I don't have that much focus and colored pencils take a lot of time. So currently I like to get drawings out pretty quickly, which means that I prefer pastels. But sometimes I prefer color pencils. All right, so that's enough dark. So now I can move on to the light again. I do have to look at the beak a little bit and work on the edge and see how it blends in with the face. That's better. All right. Okay, so now adding the lights is really going to make a difference. Um, so for the light hairs, we need to pick a color that suits all these colors underneath. And I think we should go for like a pinkish tone, maybe a slightly orangey tone, which might look nice as well. Now, I think I'm going in for 681. Um, stay neutral. So I never like to put in the lighter details with very vibrant colors. I rather make sure that the underlying colors are already nice and vibrant so that with the light we just have to put in the textures and we don't have to worry about the colors anymore. 
So I'm going to take 681, make sure it's very sharp. Um, how many hours do I spend on a drawing? Well, that, that depends. So I'm currently working on a big piece of a leopard, which is probably going to take eventually about 20 hours. This one will take, I think, about two or three. So it really varies on the size. Or it, de it depends on the size. The bigger the size, usually the longer it takes. So with the 681, I'm going to add the lighter feathers now. So I can just add them on top and I'm going to put them in between the darker lines that I just drew. The feathers are very short, so I'm drawing short lines. I'm going to treat them more like drawing fur. Short hair. And all the areas that are lit up, which is mainly the, the top half of the face. The door just rang. I have no idea who's at the door. Okay, that was awkward. <laughs> All right, so focusing on the outer edge of the face, adding all these nice light lines. Looking at the feather direction. Okay, so just a few of these lines are already making quite a difference. I don't want to overdo it for a drawing this small. So we have some little feathers next to the beak, underneath the eye. Let's see what time it is. It's nine already, so I'm one hour in. I'm going to do another 20 minutes, and then I'm going to call it done for tonight, and then finish the rest next week. All right, so I think I want to highlight the top of the um, head a little bit more by adding some white. Just a few white hairs, not too many. Highlighting some of these feathers a little bit more. All right.
blowing off the dust again. Okay, so now I can always go back in with some of the darks. Put in a bit more contrast with them as well in between the light lines I just drew and at this stage I don't want to smudge or blur anymore because that's only going to fade out all the details I just put in. So I only blend with my finger like one maybe two times but not more than that. Usually you see with beginners that they keep smudging until the paper is saturated and then you can't really put any detail on top anymore. So I just try to let the pencils do the work. And I also need to put in that eyelid and make sure we have a bit of a better transition between the beak and the face. Working with a uh, 640 now, just putting in a bit more darks, a bit more contrast here and there, some slightly darker lines in between the feathers. Okay, so for the eyelids, I see some gray, I see a bit of purple, I think it's easiest to use 642, which is purplish, but it's not a very vibrant tone. So let's sharpen this one. Look at the comments quickly. Um, do I copy the reference photo from my phone? What do you mean? I'm not sure. I do have the reference photo uh, on my iPad in front of me. So I always work from my iPad because it has the most um, accurate colors, I feel. Oh. <laughs> My boyfriend in the comments says, I took care of the doorbell. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> Luckily, because I really didn't want to get up. Thank you, Watcher Arc. Or A A R K. I'm fine, Michelle. Thanks. How are you? Um, do I choose colors based on values? Well, yeah, the colors are not that important, actually. It's more like the lights and the darks, the contrasts, which are the most important. I do try to be as accurate as possible with the colors, but with such a small, limited drawing, limited space, it's better to look at how light or dark the colors are and not worry too much about being exactly like the reference. Okay, so taking the 642, filling in this eyelid area. Very small little line around the eye. This is probably too dark, but I can always go over with a lighter color to lighten it, lighten it back up. I need to focus for this. Okay, so that's just a bit of 642, and then I can always take, well, let's do this one. This is number 700, it's a light beige. It does have a warm undertone, and the 642 also has a warm undertone, which means they will go quite well together. I do like to look at warm and cool, so I try to not add very cool tones like blue on top of very warm tones like yellow because then you get green 
and usually we don't want green in fur or in feathers unless we have actual green feathers but then it's better to just use green so I do look more at um, warm and cool which is quite important okay so lightening up that little eyelids I would recommend if you're planning on doing this drawing too maybe do it a bit larger that will be easier okay and then I can go in again with the black for the eye and just go around the outlines again sharpening the shape of the eye like that and then suddenly you can see this highlight standing out very well I think I'm just going to keep this white because if I'm going to add any color in here I will just smudge it so I'm going to shape the highlight a bit better so it's more like the photo then I'm just going to call the eye area done maybe add a bit more black in front of the eye underneath that eyebrow area um Now I wonder what is better for beginners, colored pencil or pastel? Oh, that really depends on what you prefer. So if you have a lot of patience and you don't like dirty hands and you don't like when your drawing gets smudged, I feel maybe colored pencils is better, but you really need a lot of patience for colored pencil. So if you don't have much, much, much patience, yeah, it's much patience, right? Not many patience. So if you have not much patience, um, you can work with pastels because it takes way less time. So I would go for which effect you like best. With pastels, you can create really nice, vibrant, painterly drawings and with color pencils you can create incredibly detailed drawings but it's not like you can't do either one with both so basically with both with both you can create really nice detailed drawings it's just what kind of look you like better and what fits your personality better i feel i just like to do both because i get bored very easily so when i switch up between the two i never get bored okay so let's work on that beak area a bit more so there's still an empty spot there, which I need to fill up. So let's go in with, I see a bit of blue. So let's add some blue for 435, which I'm going to put right here. And I see the blue there because it's the, the reflection from the sky into the beak all right so this area is too small to do a lot of detail so i'm just going back to my feather colors um let's do the 645 and i'm just going to add some little 
like hairs going on top of the beak, creating a bit more of a natural transition. I don't want a super harsh line between the face and the beak area. So that's already a lot better. Thank you, Edie. It looks nice. It's not the most photorealistic drawing I've ever made. But it's a nice illustration. I like it. I'm very curious to see what it's going to turn out like when the, the blue feathers are in. The blue is going to contrast very well with the background color, which is a warm tone. Then the blue is a very cool tone. So then by using um, complementary colors, I can make sure that the drawing stands out very well from the background. So this is just the start, but I think I'm going to wrap it up almost. Maybe let's see what I can add. I can add that little chest area, so I can continue with the, the reds and the browns over the chest, and then I can save the blue parts for next week. Continuing with the browns, so that will be the 645. Sharpen it. Okay, so I'm going to continue the 645 down towards the right over that little chest area. I think I broke my points. Yep, yeah, it broke. Let's sharpen again. So this still happens. Probably my, my sharpener is a bit too dull already at this stage. Colored pencils sharpen way easier than pastels. So if you don't like to have broken points all the time, maybe colored pencil is a better choice. <laughs> Okay. Let's go along this wing part. Outline very carefully and then I'm also outlining the chest the edge of the chest Okay, so that's all still brown. Here we have a little bit of brown. And then I can fill this in lightly again. Super light base layer.
Okay. So I definitely see more of that orange in there as well. So let's add some of the orange tones. So that was 675. Here and there, I see more of the orange. So I don't need to add it everywhere. I can just put that on top. Right here. Put in all the colors that I see for the first layers. Um, did I drop the pencil? No, I don't think so. Or not that I can remember. Maybe I've dropped it in the past. I'm not sure. I drop my pencils all the time, actually. But I'm not sure if I dropped that one. Thank you, Linda. That's really nice to hear. I have a lot of videos on my YouTube channel, a lot of streams as well. So if you're a beginner, maybe the, um, the black and white projects. I do have a, a really nice dog eye live stream with pastel pencils in black and white, which is pretty easy to follow. Oh, and also I have loads of real time tutorials on my website as well, which are way more extended. I also have a course on sketching cats and dogs, which is also on my website in the Drawing Club membership. So if you're interested in joining, you can check that out through the link in the description. Okay, so before I finish up, I'm going to add a bit more dark as well. Uh, map out all the darks in there. So I'm going to take 640 and here and there in the chest I see some dark patches which are the feathers just overlapping each other. Right here. Looking at the darks. I really like to do longer projects in streams, but already with this one, it's very small, but it's it takes more time than I was planning to. So I'm not going to finish this. I will finish it next week. And maybe after that, I'll do a more simple black and white sketch again. All right, so here it's quite dark, like underneath the belly, right there. And so then let's do just a set of red 310. Get some more vibrancy in there as well. And filling up the paper a bit more. And then I'll move on to the um, details next week. Just want to make sure that the paper is filled up nicely. You can't see any of the paper texture through anymore. I'm going to go back to the starting color 
a little bit more. making sure that the line around the wing is very, very sharp. I don't want fuzzy edges around the wing, so let's sharpen that line. And then next week I, I can fill in the wing very nice and vibrant blue. Um, thank you, oxygen mate. <laughs> Is that Dutch? I'm not sure. Yeah, I wish I could finish it tonight, but then I would have to continue for another two hours and it's going to be too late for me. So it's better to finish it next week with fresh eyes. Then I'll probably have a better result. Look at this a little bit more. Let's go back in to some final thingies on the, the beak. Thank you, Linda. Have a nice walk with the dog. Um, will I spray this to keep it from getting smudged? Or do you do that when you are finished? No, I never spray my drawings anymore. I used to do that, but the sprays that I use always um, change the colors and caused like blotches on the paper. So I quit using sprays. It's not really necessary. I just put my drawings in frames or in like portfolios. It's not really necessary to spray them. <laughs> it's really hard to switch between Dutch and English. Okay, so I'm going to wrap it up for tonight. So if you have any more questions, let me know. I can go through the comments real quick. Oh yeah, zeker. And yeah, you can always look back als je wil. Uh, Oké, okay, so this one will stay online and then I'll create a new stream for part two of this one. And then if there aren't any more questions, it's 3.30 p.m. here in NYC. Oh wow, it's really hot. Right here it's still, the temperatures are still like winter. Although it's spring, so I hope it will get, it will start to get more warm soon. Right here it's 9.30 p.m. So it's time to quit working. <laughs> Thank you, Edie. Okay, so thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. Next week will be even more fun. I really can't wait to, to get started with the blues because that will make a big difference for this drawing. It will really make it pop out. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and I will see you next week.